In this video we're going to talk about finding a polynomial with uh, given zeros. So in this first example it says find a polynomial function that has the given zeros and the zeros are minus 5, 2, and 4. So what we want is a function f of x, right, a polynomial function f of x, such that when you plug in minus 5 you get an output of 0. Right, f of minus 5 is 0. But we also want f of 2 to be 0 and f of 4 to be 0. So how do we do that? Well. If minus 5 is going to be a 0, then x plus 5 should be a factor of our polynomial. So we can write our polynomial in factored form as x plus 5 times x minus 2 times x minus 4. And it's pretty clear now that if you wanted to find, for example, f of 4, what would f of 4 be? Well, you could plug in 4 everywhere you see an x. If you plug in 4 here, you get 9. If you plug in 4 here, you get 2. But if you plug in 4 here, you get 0. And it doesn't matter what those other things are. If you multiply by 0, you're going to get 0. And same thing with 2 and minus 5. Okay, now when it says uh, find a polynomial function, this is certainly a polynomial function. But if we wanted to write it out in standard form, how would we do that? Okay, well, one thing we can do is First of all, let's multiply multiply out uh, x plus 5 times x minus 2. So let's FOIL that out. x times x gives us x squared. We have a plus 5x from the inside two terms and a minus 2x from the outside two terms. That gives us plus 3x. And finally, 5 times minus 2 is minus 10. Okay, so now we have x squared plus 3x minus 10 times x minus 4. How do we multiply this out? Okay, well, essentially what we need to do is multiply every term in here, all three of these terms, by every term in here, right, both of these two terms. So how do we do that? Well, let's do it in kind of an orderly fashion. Let's take x here and multiply that by each of these three terms, and then we'll take minus 4 and multiply by each of these three terms. So we do x times x squared gives us x cubed. x times 3x is 3x squared x times minus 10 is minus 10x. Okay, now let's do minus 4 times each of the terms. We get minus 4x squared minus 12x plus 40. All right, minus 4 times minus 10 is plus 40. Now let's combine our like terms. We have x cubed, but then notice we have a 3x squared and a minus 4x squared. That would be minus 1x squared. And then we have a, uh, here we have a minus 10x and a minus 12x. So that's going to give us minus 22x. And finally, we just have the one constant 40. Okay, so our, our polynomial is x cubed minus x squared minus 22x plus 40. Now, how could you check your answer? Well, you could uh, try plugging in 4, for example, in here. Do you end up getting 0 as an output? And same thing with 2 and with minus 5. Do you end up getting 0 as an output? And it turns out that you will. All right, let's try another example. Find a polynomial that has the given zeros. Now, notice this time we have some square roots here. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, we can write this as f of x equals, well, again, x plus the square root of 7, x minus the square root of 7, and then x minus 3. Okay, notice if we plug in minus the square root of 7 for x, that term becomes 0. If we plug in plus the square root of 7, that term becomes 0. And if we plug in 3, that becomes 0. Okay, so let's multiply this out. Now, I think it's going to be easiest if we take these first two and multiply them out because I think we'll get some nice simplification. Notice x times x is x squared. If we multiply the two inside terms, we get plus the square root of 7 times x. If we multiply the two outside terms, we get minus the square root of 7 times x. So notice that those add to 0, right? They subtract out. But then finally we have plus the square root of 7 times minus the square root of 7. That's going to be minus 7, right? The square root of 7 times the square root of 7 is 7, but then one's plus and one's minus, so we have minus. Okay, so what we get is just x squared minus 7 times x minus 3. Okay, now we can uh, FOIL this out here. Let's let's take x and multiply it by uh, each of these two terms. Notice we would get x cubed minus 7x. And then we'll take 3 and multiply by each of those terms. We get minus 3x plus 21. Now let's write this in descending order. Uh, oh, by the way, that should be uh, minus 3x squared. Um, let's write these in descending order in terms of the uh, the degree of the term. So let's let, we'll write it as x cubed minus 3x squared minus 7x plus 21. Okay, and that's our final answer. Okay, again, you could check this by plugging these in. It'd be a little tricky and a little messy to plug in something like the square root of 7, but 3 wouldn't be so hard to plug in. In fact, if we do plug in 3, we would get 27 here minus, I think it's 27, 
because 3 times 9 is 27. And then, uh, so that's 0. And then minus 21, 7 times 3, and then plus 21. So that all ends up being 0. Okay, you could do the same thing with the square root of 7 or minus the square root of 7, but it's, it's a little messier. Okay, let's do one more. And this one is going to involve um, some imaginary numbers. So here we want to find a polynomial that has these three numbers as zeros. So we have uh, 3i is going to be a 0, so x minus 3i will be a factor of the polynomial. Negative 3i is a 0, so x plus 3i will be a factor. And finally, 5 is a 0, so x minus 5 will be a factor. Okay, now if we uh, multiply out, uh, these two terms here at the beginning, we have x times x is x squared. We're going to have a minus 3ix from the inside two terms and a plus 3ix from the outside two terms. Okay, so those are going to go away. Those add to zero. And finally, we have a minus 3i times a plus 3i. That's minus 9i squared. But remember, i squared is negative 1. Right, i is kind of this strange number that when you square it, you get a negative number. Right? You get negative 1. So notice what we end up getting really inside the parentheses here is x squared minus 9i squared, but that's like x squared plus 9 because, again, i squared is negative 1. Okay, and then we still have to multiply by x minus 5. So let's do this. Let's take x times each of these two terms. It's going to give us x cubed plus 9x. And then minus 5 times each of those terms. So that gives us minus 5x squared minus 45. And so our final answer is x cubed minus 5x squared plus 9x minus 45. And you can check for yourself that these three numbers are all zeros of that polynomial.